This week at Starbase, while Ship 38 is busy receiving its aft flaps and crews are hard at work fabricating a new Block 3 ship test article, SpaceX launches a much-anticipated 10th Starship flight from South Texas. Will everything go as planned, or will we have another repeat of the last several flights? Can SpaceX finally declare a mission success as the run of Block 2 Starships begins winding down? Let's dig into this week's update and find out. Starting off this week in the early hours of Monday morning, a crane was spotted lifting free a liquid oxygen flex line from the ship quick disconnect arm after a leak in it had it caused an abort in the launch attempt the day before. And just hours later, a replacement hose was lifted up and lowered into place for installation. While crews were bolting it into place, SpaceX wasted no time beginning preparations for the next launch attempt for Flight 10 with a few rounds of igniter testing on Booster 16. By late morning, with the cryo hose swapped out on the ship quick disconnect, the interface was extended and reattached to ship 37. A few hours later, the access platform was retracted as things continued to progress. Next, the chopsticks were open and raised into their launch configuration. Shortly after, the detonation suppression system was tested. By mid-afternoon, the tank farm was spooled up and SpaceX got to work cooling down Stage 0 in preparation for propellant loading. As the countdown continued, propellant began flowing into both Ship 37 and Booster 16 without the issues seen the day before. SpaceX also tested out the Starship's forward and aft flaps. Unfortunately, as we closed into the terminal count following a brief hold, it was determined that the weather was no-go. SpaceX turned the launch attempt into a wet dress rehearsal and held the countdown at T-10 seconds before beginning detanking procedures. Eventually, the chopsticks were lowered and closed back around Ship 37. We didn't have to wait long for the next attempt, however, as SpaceX was right back at it the next day. By early afternoon, the chopsticks were once again moving into launch position. About an hour later, the tank farm started to wake up. The tower and launch mount then started to vent as SpaceX began to pre-chill the infrastructure. As the launch drew ever closer, propellant load got underway and both stages of the rocket began to frost up. Meanwhile, Ship 37 performed some flap actuation testing. Finally, just as the launch window opened at 6.30 p.m. local time, Booster 16 lit up its 33 Raptor engines and blasted off into the South Texas skies. The stack powered on through Max-Q, losing one Raptor about a minute and a half into launch. Despite the loss, the rocket continued on to most engine cutoff and hot staging. The booster then performed a controlled flip and started its boost back burn. Notably, the engine that went out during ascent did not relight. Following the burn, Booster 16 jettisoned its hot staging adapter and the grid fins controlled its descent back to the targeted landing zone in the Gulf. A little less than six and a half minutes after launch, the Super Heavy booster relit those same 12 inner engines as it started its landing burn. As it slowed, one of the center three engines was intentionally shut down, as well as eight of the nine running engines in the middle ring, simulating what would happen if one of the center three engines failed to light for the landing burn. The rocket then slowed to a controlled hover above the gulf before eventually cutting its engines and dropping the remaining distance to the water as planned. The ship continued through its ascent burn, successfully reaching its targeted speed and trajectory and shut down its engines. During its coast phase, the payload bay door was open and the Starlink dispenser activated. For the first time, Starship demonstrated payload deployment capability as its eight Starlink satellite simulators were slowly ejected from the payload bay at a rate roughly one per minute. One of them rotated as it was released, clipping the top of the payload bay door, indicating that while the system did function, some adjustments and fine-tuning are still needed. Following the payload demonstration, the ship continued its coast phase and eventually performed a quick planned single-engine relight to prove out deorbit capability. About nine minutes later, there was a small but energetic event in the ship's aft, possibly caused by ice buildup in the plumbing area. This resulted in a gash in the skirt, some damage to the adjacent flap, and some debris in the engine compartment. Despite the damage, the ship proved its durability as it continued on its planned aggressive re-entry path. During re-entry, the aft flaps experienced some burn through, although some of this could have been exacerbated by the damage in flight. As we've seen previously, however, the hardware proved resilient as the flaps continued to work and kept the ship on target. 
A little more than an hour after launching in Texas, Starship 37 dropped through the clouds over the Indian Ocean, lit its three sea level engines, flipped and slowed as it approached the water in a controlled splashdown. It did appear that the ship may have carried a little extra speed into the water, possibly as a result of the damage from the small in-space explosion. Also of note, during the landing we could see a red-orange discoloration on much of the ship's heat shield and white across the nose. We later learned that the red and orange came from the oxidation of the metallic test tiles and the white from the exposed insulation where the SpaceX removed the tiles before flight. Following the issue in recent tests of the Block 2 system, the flight proved to be a much needed success for the program, checking the box for every major goal for the mission. Moving on to this week's fabrication updates, around all the excitement of launch, Cruise and Mega Bay 2 lifted both aft flaps for Ship 38 for installation on the Flight 11 Starship. Early on Tuesday morning, a single ring section emerged from the Star Factory building. It was eventually hooked up to a crane and taken to the Sanchez site for scrapping. Later that day, a three ring section emerged from Star Factory and made its way to Mega Bay 2. This section appears to be for the new test article that will be used to prove out some of the upgrades for the Block 3 ship aft section. The next day, the article was lifted for stacking on another section that had been brought out into the building previously. Following the successful launch, crews at the launch complex were quick to get back to work on Pad B, with the new steel being installed on the gantry less than a day after Flight 10. Up the road at the build site, crews were busy this week pouring concrete for the foundations for the new Gigabay. Multiple concrete pump trucks were seen multiple times with some pours lasting the better part of the day as the support for the massive rocket production facility requires hefty foundations. A new assembly jig was brought from Sanchez to the build site and staged outside Mega Bay 2, then later picked up by a crane and moved next to another structure outside of Mega Bay 1. We really want to know what you think this is going to be used for, so let us know what you think in the comments below. Earlier in the week, before all the distractions of both aborted and successful launch attempts, the SpaceX crew was busy testing the B-18.1 test tank over at the Massey Outpost. Frost could be seen on the article multiple days as it underwent another couple of rounds of cryogenic testing. On Wednesday, the Army Corps of Engineers released proposed plans for SpaceX's expansion on the launch complex. These plans show that the company wants to roughly double the footprint of their facility and build out the ground support infrastructure significantly, including adding large natural gas liquefaction plants. As expected, they will also upgrade the old pad to match the design changes we see at the new pad. Switching over to Falcon 9 operations in Florida, early on Sunday morning, SpaceX launched the CRS-33 mission from Space Launch Complex 40. This resupply mission to the International Space Station is carrying a first-of-its-kind boost trunk with extra propellant and engines to perform a reboost of the space station, something SpaceX has not had the capability of doing before. As of note, it appears that one of the emergency escape slides on the tower was accidentally activated and would need reset, and likely undergo some troubleshooting before the next Crew Dragon mission. On Wednesday morning, Falcon 9 Booster 1095 launched its second mission as it lifted off from Space Launch Complex 40 with 28 Starlink V2 mini satellites. And just hours later, Falcon 9 leading Booster 1067 was rolled out to the pad at Launch Complex 39A and raised vertical. Early the next morning, the rocket lifted off for an unbelievable 30th time, carrying yet another batch of Starlink satellites on their way to low Earth orbit. The veteran booster had another successful landing, leaving it ready for refurbishment ahead of future missions. In other space news, earlier in the week at Launch Complex 39A, it appears that Starship infrastructure construction crews have began installing sections of the commodities gantry alongside the under construction flame trench. Relativity Space announced this week that they've finished qualification testing for their Aeon R engine, completing more than 60 hot fires to prove out the design. Also this week, Firefly Aerospace told us that the FAA had given them clearance to resume launches of their Alpha rocket after they experienced an issue during stage separation back in April that led to a mission failure. On Saturday, Rocket Lab's Electron rocket launched from New Zealand, carrying an Echo Star Lyra 2 satellite, as well as four confidential payloads to sun-synchronous orbit. On Thursday, Rocket Lab had a ceremonial ribbon cutting for their Launch Complex 3 at the Mid-Atlantic Regional Spaceport in Virginia, 
This pad was built to launch their Neutron rocket, which is designed to be reusable and currently expected to launch later this year. And there you have it, another SpaceX and Starbase weekly update brought to you by Lab Padre. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button if you haven't already, guys, and we'll see you next week. Thanks for watching. Lab Padre out.